You're going to be hearing this phrase a lot in the coming days, serious risk of escalation. So here's Secretary of State Antony Blinken warning all parties not escalate the tensions further. Listen. The United States uh, did not know about, uh, nor was it involved in, uh, these uh, incidents. And we're still gathering uh, the information and gathering the facts. Uh, broadly speaking, we've been very clear, and we remain very clear, about the importance of all parties avoiding any steps that could further escalate the conflict that we're trying to resolve uh, in Gaza uh, to see it spread to other fronts. So let's bring in CBS News intelligence and national security correspondent Olivia Gosses. Okay, so Olivia, you just heard the Secretary of State there. What more are we learning about today's explosions? And also, how can we de-escalate when this seems like an escalation, the definition of escalation? It's a great question, Reed. And these operations appear to have all of the trappings of a sophisticated and methodical intelligence operation, apparently involving multiple countries and a careful methodical infiltration of the supply chains involved in building and issuing these devices. As you've heard, the U.S. is denying any and all knowledge and involvement in everything that has come to pass in the past 48 hours and is urging calm and restraint, not only from Hezbollah, which as you heard, has already vowed harsh revenge, but from Iran, uh, whose, whose ambassador to Lebanon was injured yesterday as part of these attacks. Western officials had just begun breathing sighs of relief that a broader retaliatory strike from Iran uh, in retaliation for the assassination of a top Hamas official in, Tem in Tehran in July did not come to pass. And now, unfortunately, the specter of escalation is again uh, pervading the region at exactly the wrong time as the U.S. is working to get uh, a ceasefire deal across the finish line. So, Olivia, stay with us because I want to get your reaction to something uh, for our viewers. We just want to let you know, Mr. Blinken also touched on negotiations with Israel shortly after that meeting. And we also heard from some of the families of some of the hostages still held in Gaza by Hamas. They're calling for both sides to get into a ceasefire agreement and to do it soon. Here's what they had to say. The Israeli government hasn't been um, as interested to reach a deal at times, and we've seen Hamas not interested in reaching deal at times, and we're trying to get into the timing where both sides uh, have similar interests. Unfortunately, right now, it feels like none of the sides have any interest, and we're here to be the voice for our family members and make sure that the administration and other nations are putting all the necessary pressure to bring Israel and Hamas again to the table and to reach an agreement where uh, our kids, our family members, our, our husbands and, and wives and, and, and grandparents are coming back. And Olivia, if I am that father or that relative of somebody who is being held by Hamas in Gaza right now, I'm looking at all of this and wondering, can an escalation do anything to help? And really the question is, can these negotiations really give these families what they're asking for? Sure. I don't, I don't know about anything to help. It seems like they could do everything to hurt the process, right? These families have been pleading with their respective governments for almost a year now for some resolution that would see their loved, their loved ones freed from captivity in, in Gaza. Uh, Secretary of State Antony Blinken is in Cairo right now in Egypt trying to broker uh, some sort of progress uh, on these uh, talks that have been lurching forward in fits and starts. Uh, the main goal of this trip or a core goal of this trip was to see if he could uh, bring closer to fruition a bridging proposal that would be disseminated among the parties to sort of close the gaps on the main sticking points. We know one of them is whether and how many Israeli forces can remain in Gaza to patrol the Philadelphia corridor in southern Gaza, something that Hamas and Egypt have raised objections to. There are also questions about how many and what type of Palestinian prisoners could be released eventually in exchange for these hostages. But as as you've noted, Reed, these escalating tensions in the region are not doing very much to facilitate progress on the talks and maybe meaningfully hampering them instead. Olivia, thank you so much for that report. We're going to need your reporting in the days to come.